Development, giving much love. Mike Check Media, here it go. Hey, what up, Mike Check fam? This your man, Kedrick, and once again, we're doing it again with the pioneers of hip-hop. Got legendary brother from the group Arrested Development, Speech on the line. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, man. I'm chilling out in my um, little sunroom right here, looking out on a beautiful day in Georgia. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a great and beautiful day in Atlanta today. Uh, outside from all the cold we've had, hey, this is a blessing. <laughs> it sure is, man. It's been a lot of uh, very weird weather, and now it's like what I, what I love about Atlanta. Oh, yeah, definitely, no doubt. So now going right into it with uh, Arrested Development, let's kind of start with the root of Arrested Development, the formation of the group, the members, and the early beginnings. How did, how did you get started? Well, um, basically we um, started off with looking, you know, I was a DJ and I was looking for a DJ because I wanted to start rapping. And uh, I put a flyer up at the Art Institute of Atlanta and uh, I saw a dude looking at the flyer and I asked him, yo, do you DJ? And he's like, yeah. His name was Headliner. Well, I named him Headliner. And, you know, we, we became best friends and started uh, kicking it, doing shows, basically asking people from the crowd to come up on stage and, you know, either paint, dance, play drums, anything, because we wanted to have sort of like a jam session, uh, you know, a time for people to just be creative. And that's sort of how the, the group started. I mean, in essence, people that used to jam with us on stage, when we called them up, they ended up being in, some of them ended up being in the group, and that's how we started. Wow. And from that, um, you spawned the track Tennessee and went right into a debut album with three years, five months, and two days in the life of. Yeah, it was really cool because um, – you know, the truth is Tennessee was the last song that we recorded for that album. And um, it was an untimely death of my grandmother and my brother the same week that made me write that song. And it was the last song we recorded, but the first song we released. Wow. I mean, and, and, and of course the rest is history because you did so much, you know, with that with that album and even getting two Grammys for that. I mean, and a lot of people can't, you know, that's been in the realm of hip-hop can add that to their repertoire of what they've done. So we definitely uh, take our hats off to you for such a stellar career. Well, thank you. I mean, you know, obviously it has to do with writing, you know, material that you think is relevant, but it, more than that, it has a lot to do with God luck and, and just uh, God choosing to use what we did as a, as a platform. So I'm really grateful because it's, it's had an effect on my life ever since. Well, yeah, definitely. And, and of course, we know with hip hop, it's about uh, the culture and 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 being different. And definitely, you guys uh, hit the scene, and it was just that. I mean, it it was part of the culture, and it was definitely different. Let's talk a little bit about maybe some of the resistance you might have faced from your peers because they weren't doing the same type of music that you were doing. Um. Well, initially, you know, when we first came out. What's weird is hip-hop really didn't understand what to do with us. They weren't sure if we were hip-hop. They weren't sure if we were R&B. It's like because we had some melodic rhyme styles and and a lot of the music we used was um, it wasn't loop-oriented, even though we did have loops. It, 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 it had more musicality to it on purpose. And our goal was to try to expand hip-hop, but one of our gifts and curses is that we tend to be um, ahead of, of our time. And so... I think at the time we were trying to do so much that a lot of the hip hop community was like, okay, then what are they doing? You know, because at that time period, it wasn't a lot of the things that uh, was being done like we were doing it at the time. There was no Drake, you know, sort of singing and rhyming. There was no, um, 
you know, at that time at least, there was nobody doing singing solos on a rap record, you know, like Jay-Z and Dre and a lot of others would end up doing that. But at that time, it just wasn't being done. It was, you know, it's it just a different different time period. Right. Wow. And you, you definitely, you know, you hit the nail on the head because you, you said you were before your time, so you could be looked at as, you know, innovators because now you have sort of footstep followers, like you said, with the Drakes and, you know, uh, everybody is kind of doing what you guys were doing and you guys did it first. Well, I love that fact that, you know, because we wanted to be original and, and that was celebrated back in the late 80s, early 90s, um, you know, when you're original, I think God has a plan for every artist. When he's original or she's original, there's something that they're supposed to bring to the table. It's just like their their thumbprint or their fingerprint that's unique to just them. And they they are going to be trends. That is, if they're original. Unfortunately, a lot of artists decide to uh, copy somebody else in order to get on the radio, and they lose faith in the fact that they have a they have something that they're supposed to bring that's unique. Definitely, definitely with that, you know, the uniqueness. And and that's kind of, you know, what we see today. A lot of people have, you know, kind of adapted themselves to others in order to make it, and it just seems like, you know, we're getting a lot of the same watered-down music. We are, and, you yeah, know, that's and, true. And, and that's definitely unfortunate, and especially, you know, at this time, you know, for hip-hop, because, I mean, you know, things happen, like you said, for a reason, and then, you know, considering what's going on now, you know, you would think that it would be some people that would like to be innovative or, you know, trend-setting and, and make their own mark. I think that there is people like that. And I, I feel like where we've got to start challenging is where the music or how the music is being distributed and promoted. So, in other words, who owns those those entities, you know, Right. I think that the that's where our, our bottleneck is, where there's a lot of creativity out there, but then it gets into a bottleneck situation when you're trying to get all that creativity through the small hole of Clear Channel or, you know, Viacom or whatever the various huge corporations that own pretty much all of the radio stations in America um, and video channels and so on and so forth. So it's like a lot of, not a lot of outlets, a lot of great music. Definitely, definitely. Now, you know, going back to, um, you know, your group Arrested Development and some of the accomplishments, I definitely wanted to make mention of the fact of the uh, track you did for Malcolm X with Spike Lee and Revolution. How did that feel, man, to, you know, uh, be able to contribute to such a profound movie and, and just working with Spike Lee? It, on both fronts, it was one of the best things of my life. You know, I've had a lot of moments in my life where I sat back and I'm just like, how am I doing this? You know? And that was one of them just to be able to do a movie on Malcolm X, who was one of my biggest heroes, you know, the transformation of this man. But even before the transformation, well, there was a number of transformative times in his life. And from being in the streets to, you know, being in prison to being nation of Islam to Orthodox Islam. I mean, this man kept on, um, elevating in his life, and if if that's not a great example of uh, somebody we all should follow, not to mention he was just bold. I mean, he was a fearless man, or or, or at least he he overcame his fears and did so much um, for all of us, and and set such a record of dignity and love for his family and his wife and uh, children, and just and, and for the people. So he's just a hero, and to do a music. Uh, sound bed for that for that particular movie was incredible. Then you got Spike Lee, who is many of the attributes I just gave to Malcolm, you know, Spike shares some of those. And, you know, he's he's one of the greatest filmmakers uh, of the African-American people in this time because he was doing things at the time that nobody else was willing to do and, and making music, I mean, uh, movies that were commercial enough, but at the same time extremely potent and saying some extremely great things to us, um, you know, just a hero. And so when he gave us, um, we met him at a club in New York. Uh, we were we were closing, and Last Poets were opening, and he was backstage, and that alone was amazing. We had been trying to reach out to him uh, with no success, like via writing letters. That's before the Internet. We were writing letters to him, and we never got a reply. But when we saw him 
at the club, he he actually came up to us and said, yo, I'd love to, you ought to do something for some movies I'm about to do. And, you know, we didn't even have to think twice about that. That was a, that was a given. We were going to do it. And so he's a really great guy to work with. Uh, very inspirational dude. Very professional, too. I mean, we, we shot that video. We have 500 people in that video. And wow. we shot that entire video. It was about three locations. We did it in a high school. We did it in our Fort Greene Park in Brooklyn. We did it um, um, on the streets as well, just in general. And all three locations, all 500 people, all shot within seven hours, in and out. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> seven hours, dude. I know people that do videos for three days. This was done in seven hours, and it was a, a great, great production. Wow, that just says, you know, a lot for hard work and preparation, definitely. Exactly. That dude is very, very serious at what he does, and um, we all deserve to applaud him. Whether you like every movie or not, anyone that's in listening reach deserves to applaud that dude. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, he's done a lot, you know, um, with movies, and he's just done a lot for black people in general. So, you know, like you exactly. said, whether you like it, his movies, some of the movies he's done or not, you know, he definitely should be applauded, and he's one of our heroes. Exactly right. Now, um, one question I did want to ask you, too, was about uh, Baba O.J. and how he how he's doing now. I heard he had a stroke a few years back, so, you know, just wanted to know if he was back better or back touring with the group. No, in fact, I don't think he'll ever tour with us again, but he's still in the group. He's still a member. We love him. Um, you know, Bob is 82 years old now, so he's wow. he is definitely doing his thing. He is um, in much better position than he was before. But, you know, with a stroke, you know, it messes up your vocal ability. So, um, you know, he's just not in the condition to be traveling as tough as we travel. Now, if we was traveling like Bruce Springsteen or maybe Jay-Z, then – I'd be glad to bring him with us because it's so plush, you know what I mean. But right, we're right. not doing the private jet type of thing right now, so we're we're we're. It's a little tough to be out there on the road. It's tough for us. I I can't even imagine he's twice our age, you know. Oh yeah, well definitely, you know, send Bob our love, and you know we, you know, definitely hope he gets to feeling better, and you know, I definitely want to just you know say thank you for setting the example of, of showing respect, you know, to the elders. I mean, because you don't see Man. that anymore. Yeah, I agree. I appreciate it. You know, it's one of the legacies that we've always done, and then we stopped it. And part of that was from the whole, you know, impact of slavery coming upon us. But even even after that, we still respected the elders. I think that we've gotten away from it, and um, I think the young people is like, you know, you know, Nowadays, I think that they feel like, you know, it's, it's all about what they want to do and instead of sort of listening to the wisdom. I think it's important, man. These these people have lived a lot of life, you know. Right, um, right. It's important to be able to just at least hear what they have to say, whether you agree or disagree, but listen to it and, and pay attention because there's a lot of jewels that they got without a question. Oh, yeah, that's definitely special mightiness too. You know, I've been around for 82 years and you know – I don't know, it was 82 years. There's definitely a lot of things that he could share with a lot of young people. You know, like I said, whether they want to listen to it or not. I mean, you got, you know, he's he's been there and he's done a lot. So definitely, you know, we've got to figure out a way to channel that, you know, the youth to give that listening ear that they need to, to you know, in order to get somewhere. Without a question, I mean, there's no use in making the same mistakes that somebody else has made. So if you're listening to somebody that's been around for a while then they've made some mistakes because everybody does, but they've overcome them or found a way to, you know, teach you how not to go through the same thing, and that's a good thing. That helps your life. That helps you move faster to where your goals are. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, Arrested Development, you have a huge, huge, huge fan base overseas. How is it touring overseas? And share some of the, the love and the feedback that you get from the fans overseas. And how just how is that? Well, it's exciting, you know, because they're into more legacy there. So, like a lot of places overseas, if they ever liked you, they'll they'll try to stick with you. They'll try to hear where your progression is going musically, um, you know, what story you're going to tell on the next record, and so on and so forth. And so, um, you know, you you get over there, and and there's people waiting for you at the airport, at the hotels, wanting to 
um, talk about lyrics that they heard from you or music or, or autographs. But also, I mean, people will go out of their way to make you gifts and um, you might be doing a show and there's people that's created handmade posters or handmade clothing or uh, it's just it's just an amazing uh, response for artists. Anybody who's an artist, your your hopes, whether you say whether you know this or not, is that people will relate to your music, that people will commune with you. And when you get over there and you see that type of response, it's it's life giving, you know, and it makes you feel like uh, you're doing the right thing. So it's a give and take. You're giving them music that they really appreciate. And then they're giving you a response that makes you want to make more of it. Wow. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes personally that, you know, over stateside, you know, we kind of take a lot of our, you know, artists in the culture for granted. And then we, we do. Cause, and, and, and then to hear the love that you guys get overseas. I mean, I, I, don't, I know how I would feel, you know, and I guess I, if you could expound on that a little bit about how that, you know, um, makes you feel about how you get the reception there versus here in the States. It's depressing sometimes. You know, you leave there and you're on a high and then you get back home <laughs> and, you know, people are sort of doubting your very existence. You know, sometimes I get here and the whole group and I, well, people are like, man, y'all should still do something again. And they're not, you know, people aren't updated on what we're doing a lot of times, so it feels as if, you know, you get back here and it's just, it's one thing to be able to be um, a regular person. That's a beautiful thing, and that's what I have in America. Like, I can walk around and there's no drama generally, but um, the other sad side of it is that just the outlets here have become so small and people are not aware of what you're doing over there, and so you know, I always tell people, go to our website, and you'll be able to see what's happening, you know, ArrestedDevelopmentMusic.com, and you'll have some updates on what we've been doing, some new music, some of the excitement that we're uh, generating places, and um, it gives people a little bit more knowledge. Okay, great. And you know, and, and talking about uh, new music, I know you had uh, back in 2012, uh, Standing at the Crossroads. Was that the latest, was that the last album that was put out by Arrested Development? Um, yes, and now we have um, Standing at the Crossroads is a free download. Um, I'm really proud of the record. I think it's a very uh, different type of record. you got to listen to it, listen to it again, try to get into our headspace. I think you'll really enjoy it. And um, There's another record that we're sort of previewing for the audience, um, for our fans, and it's called Splash. And basically that record is going to be on our website for the next two days. And after that okay. we're going to pull it down. So um, people can buy it. They can listen to it stream it and um but we're going to pull it down after that so i definitely want to tell the listeners to check it out <laughs> well yeah definitely because it's not it's not done it's not done we're, okay. we're sort of letting people preview it and we're finishing it up so that's the reason we're going to pull it back down and i think it's great to hear it in our sort of formative stages you know okay great so definitely we want to get the fans over to the website if you could repeat that website uh one more time ArrestedDevelopmentMusic.com. Definitely, you got two days to check out Splash before it comes down, and to hear, you know, good, great music from a great group, and you just, wow. I mean, and then you got a free download for Standing at the Crossroads. So definitely, we got to get fans more involved with our groups, with our heroes like yourself, to, you know, keep them abreast of what's going on with the music. I mean, and social media is, you know, what's trending at the moment. So definitely, you know, if you're into social media, you should be able to access all of this stuff right away, instantly. Yep, definitely. So now, as far as um, the Splash Project, you guys, are, are you touring any now or, you know, got things going on around locally in Atlanta? Yeah, we uh, a little bit of both. We um, In Atlanta, we have an event that I throw every third Thursday. It's called the Mixtape Mixer. Um, you can go to our website, the mixtape uh, or mixtapemixer.org, and it's a networking event. So if you're striving to move forward in your career, regardless of what that career is, music, dance, behind the scenes, come to this event. It's free. I'll be there. And um, we have live performances and 
speakers and everything, and it's uh, really, really a great event. Every third Thursday here in Atlanta, the website is mixtapemixture.org. And um, as far as touring, we got um, – this year we've been to, gosh, Australia. Uh, we've been to New Zealand. We've been to Japan, um, a lot of the places in the States. And this Wednesday we're going to, to Dubai. And so we're just touring. We're doing a lot of great shows, and it's been an amazing year so far. Wow. So, I mean, you definitely, you know, have cemented a legacy, you know, and uh, we applaud you, you know, for a stellar career and just being a, a definite positive influence on, on black people in general, on people in general. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. It means a lot to us. And you guys, and you, you in particular, and all of the fans that's listening, the support you guys have given us allows us to do what we do. And the day you pull that from us, we can't do it. So we're really appreciative for everybody that supports us. And what's cool about AD is that, you know, when you support or buy one of our records, we give 20% of the proceeds to the homeless. And we have a foundation called the Mr. Wendell Foundation, and it's one of the things that we're doing to give back. And so whenever you buy something from us, just know that yeah, 20% 20, 20 of it's going to be going to a great cause as well. So it's a good thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and of course, uh, Mr. Wendell, of course, one of my all-time favorites, and and what I love about, you know, um, I, I listen to satellite radio a lot, and I, I listen to Backspin, and Backspin yeah, me definitely is a huge supporter of AD, and, I mean, they play yeah. pretty much all the classics, and, and I love it. So we definitely, you know, grateful for, for stations like Backspin, and, and I wish that, you know, more terrestrial radio stations would pick up and, and become a classic hip-hop station, like, you know, you have your regular rock stations, and then you have a classic rock station. Right, exactly, yeah. I think that's important because it, it shows the legacy, and especially for people that love hip-hop, which a lot of people do, you know, it shows where it's come from and where it's going. And there's a, there's a cliche phrase, but it's very true, that you can't you can't know where you're going unless you know where you come from. So Exactly, exactly. All right, so now one, one final question I did have for you, kind of a fun question. Um, give us a little something uh, of the fans that, Something about you, about you rather, that the fans would be surprised to know. Well, one one thing that some fans may not know uh, is that I tend to preach sometimes, and so I I do like sermons and stuff like that. And um, I have I have the ability to to marry couples as well to like to uh, you know do a wedding for somebody. So th these are things that people probably don't know that I do. Hey, wow, hey, now that would be cool, man. If I wasn't already married, <laughs> I would. It would be definitely a great <laughs> honor and a privilege to be married by the speech, man. One of my heroes <laughs> in hip hop, so that would be awesome, man. Or hey, maybe you know what? Uh, we're talking about uh, renewal of some vows. Maybe I should get with you on that later on down the line. That would be awesome. How long you been married? Uh, this year for us will be thirteen years. Oh, congratulations, man! There's yeah. a song on um, this splash record that we wrote. It's called Rolling, and it's basically talking about uh, sort of the power of making that commitment, you know, jumping over the broom. And it's a cool, it's a cool track. I, I see what people think about it. A lot of people say it's one of the best records on this uh, preview uh, album, so we'll see. But um, check it out. It's called Rolling. It's like for people that uh, are interested in getting married or they are married, you know. Hey, well, definitely, I'm going to be. Uh be on that record and, and, and looking for it because, I mean, you know, it, it takes a lot to make a commitment like that. So, hey, that's definitely some inspiration for me as well. I appreciate that. Yeah, no doubt. Check it out. I think it it could be like a soundtrack for you. You know what I'm saying? When, when times get rough in the relationship, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I mean, anybody tell me that they don't have any ups and downs in a relationship, I know they're lying. So. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, that's easy to I agree. All right, so now as far as uh, social media and your presence, we've got the website from you. Uh, where can the fans find you, maybe on Facebook or Twitter? Yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I mean, um, at the end of the day, ArrestedDevelopmentMusic.com is the one-stop shop. ArrestedDevelopmentMusic.com. Okay. Well, definitely a uh, speech on behalf of myself, Carolyn Grady, uh, and Mike Check Media. We definitely thank you for taking the time out to – talk all things hip-hop with us and be a part of our Pioneers of Hip-Hop series. Much appreciated, man. Much love to you guys. Tell Karen I send love, too. All right, no doubt. 
Hey, you heard it first. This your man, Kedrick. I'm checking out for Mike Check Media. Peace. It's crazy to think that someone else.